You go down to San Diego, and what what are they doing for you that gets you off of the antidepressants and gets you feeling better? So uh, it's again like you get in there, and I mean it's it's scary to go again. Like I said, there's there's all these different people in there. Um, the man found the the research on it by um, treating his own autistic kid and and you can see the before and after videos of this kid and it's like damn okay and then um, I brought my son in too because he has ADHD and he's off his medication now as well so um, going in there uh, they do an EEG first and like they can tell which parts of your brain are are firing at what hurts and seeing um, the congruencies and like how all of that is happening or not happening and um, then they kind of prescribe these these different th- these machines like on your on your brain that make uh these like electric impulses but they're magnetic to um kind of speed up or slow down the different parts of your brain so if the front of your brain is moving slower than the back of your brain or those or, or whatever so um they're noticing obviously uh patterns with fighters hockey players football players like like people that are leading with their heads basically um having like uh, and then with the veterans, there's like emotional um, things too. Or I mean, the bursts. And yeah. yeah, and then like I mean, having to compartmentalize as well. Like some of the shit they see should be upsetting, you know. So and and you know, but there's there's different ways that we can train our brain to to drop things like that. And then PTSD is when it's involuntary and it and it all comes in and and that. So you know, I. I've been diagnosed with PTSD. I had walked in there with medication because of being depressed uh, and the anxiety and, and all of that. Like my symptoms were terrible and I know they're a combination of things, but even like my startle reflex, like, you know, I could hear someone come walking around the corner, like clack, 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 hear their shoes. But the second I'd see them, it would, it would stop my heart for a second. And hmm. that's like shit on your adrenal glands, you know? And, and, um, all this stuff was, you know, and, anxiety that um i don't know it was, it was hard to fall asleep at night uh you know my memory was crap and and this is all you know different stuff happening in all these other fighters that i know as well mm. but i mean I, I, like i said i've been trying things so much so much over the past few years that i get excited about and either it works or it doesn't and um <clears throat> the the point is 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 now I found this and I feel better from this, but I, I was so excited about all these other things. Like I can't just start telling everybody of the new thing that I found because I've said that and been excited about like everything else, but this one, this one. What are the things you've been excited about? Um, like the Equoscope. It's like What's a, that? it's a, um, same thing. It's kind of like a tens machine or a stem machine, but like mm-hmm. a super, super low frequency. And that's badass too. Like it, it, it helped on injuries. Like, you know, if I rolled my ankle or hurt my toe, like you could bring the swelling down from this to, to normal essentially in like an hour and a half, just working with this t- like tens unit on it. And, and mm-hmm. I mean, they, they originally used it for race horses and, and for, you know, super expensive million dollar horses. Like the equipment they brought over was like 90 grand mm-hmm. and like like these really specific like special metals that were put into these plates and you know they would do stuff like that but that wasn't working on my head it was working on injuries and it was working on um i want to say it helped with like my like digestive system maybe or my um uh i don't remember some some other things it was helping with too but what you know i i i started doing that um or i was doing that when i walked into mindset and started doing that treatment and so what do they do at Mindset? So you sit in a chair, you know, and they ha- they put this prescription in this machine and the machine has kind of got like a, like an arm that <clears throat> goes on a specific part of your brain and you, you know, you close your eyes and it sends these, these magnetic pulses into your head. And I mean, you don't feel anything. It's almost like you can hear what it feels like, but I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's a sense it's, there's a, it's sensual, but it's not, it's not exactly hearing and it's not exactly feeling. Huh. Um, but you can tell something's happening. Yeah. And I mean, you, you leave the place after your treatment. Like I go, I would go twice a day. It's 45 minutes away, both ways. So I am driving a lot every day to go to do this cause I want to give it a fair shot. <clears throat> you, do, you do it every day? I do. 
every day. I haven't wow. gone these past couple of weeks because uh, stuff with my kids' uh, schedule, <clears throat> school is almost out, and then wanting to try out different things, different coaches uh, as far as these new disciplines go. So I haven't been there as much. But, um, yeah, for the last <sighs> – it was August, I believe, is is when I was like really, really getting into it and going twice a day, forty five minutes each way, twice a day. Twice a day. <clears throat> yeah. So you would you would spend forty five minutes one way, one way, go back, uh -huh. and then go back again, mm -hmm. and then go back. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just fucking move closer to where the place is? Because the alliance was down there, oh, and damn. so I would Jesus. I would drop my kid off at school, I would run, and then I would go there. I would do my treatment. I'd go back to practice down in Southern San Diego. Then I'd get my son and then we'd go up there for the afternoon session. And then I'd come back down and, and we'd go to his sports and then I'd have my second two a day. Jesus. Mm -hmm. That does not leave a lot of free time for Kat Zingano. Oh, hell no. Oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Just that alone could be stressful and yeah. all that fucking but driving. I was seeing the results. That was yeah. the crazy thing is so I was feeling better. How well, did, what did the results feel like? When I just walked in like, like... God, like I couldn't sleep. I had just uh, anxiety. Like I had that that um, startle effect going. Like the um, my memory was shit. And these are all things that I went to the UFC PI to talk to them about because mm -hmm. I'm like I don't know what to do. Right. Like I I want to fight. They offered me to fight Chris Cyborg at 145. <clears throat> and That's I was like, more of the same. Yeah, and I was like, well, like hell yeah, let's take that. But like, can you guys at least help me get this shit figured out first, please? You know? And they're like, sure. Um, so Duncan French, he's at the, mm -hmm. the, he's at, he's, so he went to college and, t and was at, or no, he was at, at Notre Dame using this treatment with the doctor, um, Kevin Murphy that runs the mindset. So, uh, he was like, this guy is doing a lot of things with people as far as brain health. He's like, go see them when you get back to San Diego. It's kind of far from you, but like, give it a shot, cat. And I called the guy, I'm on the phone, super frustrated, like super like emotional i'm like i'm i'm at my wits end like i've tried everything i can think of like holistic views like chemical views this like everything i mean spending money out of my pocket trying to figure this out because none of this is covered by the ufc especially because you know not something i claimed in a fight i mean i fought amanda and if you don't claim that stuff within the 30 days like you're on your own and of course my head hurt of course i'm dizzy of course lights are bright of course i can't think right i got in a fist fight you know, and I, I wasn't doing good in it for a while. So I, I figured, you know, but then a month and a half, two months out when I wasn't better, it's like, so it, even though it clearly <clears throat> came from that fight, you still don't get covered. Mm -mm. What? No. Well, and it's endocrine stuff too, you know? And, and it's like, there's very, there's like, how could they dispute that? That's where it came from though. You go, Hey, sit down. I want you to watch something and just play that first round. Go, what the fuck do you think happened? I don't know. But, I mean, if you play that video for them, if anybody in the insurance business was denying you coverage, saying that didn't happen d while you were under the banner of the UFC, like, you're out of your fucking mind. Watch that video. What do you think is happening? Well, this fucking assassin is throwing <laughs> bombs at your face. I mean, that's, that is crazy that that's not covered. Yeah. That makes me sick. Oh, it's frustrating because by, by like literally you, you look at the papers, like it costs me more to fight than, well, than it, than I make. It, listen, you know? it might make sense if it was dealing with a broken hand or a torn ligament or something like that. It might make sense. It might. It does not make any fucking sense if you're talking about brain injuries. Because anybody I mean, who understands how brain injuries work know that there's, there's a considerable amount of time after a fight where you still are suffering from symptoms and you might decide 30 days later, 60 days later, 90 days later, you got to do something about it. Right. Well, I mean, now I know yeah. now I, I come out of a fight and I'm like, my pinky hurts, my elbow hurts, my right. hair hurts, my eyebrow hurts. <laughs> like we're, yeah. we're going to claim all of this, you right. know, because before right. I was just being tough, you know? Yeah. But I'm that's fine. what fighters okay. do. This mm -hmm. is why it's so crazy. And I didn't like, I didn't get it and I didn't know. And then, but they it, should know if they're in the, if they're in the business of insuring fighters, they should have a larger window where people can claim head injuries. Right. We're talking but about that's. I mean, that that it kind of goes together with like any kind of any kind of mental anything. Like yeah. any. You talk about mental illness. You talk about head injuries. You talk about TBI. It all goes into that stigma of like you can't see it, so it must not be real. Right. You know what I mean, right. or, or or whatever. So it's like 
But that's the head injury business. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically. Yeah. The point is to make them drop and be done. That's what everybody, I mean, it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world to win with a body kick or an arm bar, but the reality is what people like is to see head injuries. Mm -hmm. We're in the head injury business. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So how long after you starting with this treatment do you start to see results? So the first, I, I would say... The first thing I noticed was my motor skills in practice. So, you know, I would go. So you think your motor skills were impaired? No. I Well, I just that? feel like I had a block. Like I said, like it, it's it was comical. And I mean, you can even ask them at Alliance. And it, it was funny. It was funny. But not to have like we're in class, you know, we're learning. I'm watching the coaches like they do a drill and they explain it. And they look up. All right. Everybody ready? Ready? One, two, three. Go. And we clap and I have no fucking idea what we're doing. You know, like we walk off and I'm like, like there was even a couple of times where they, like they clap and they're like, cat, what are we doing? And I'm like, um, three kick. And they're like, no, 20 pushups. And I'm like, man, I'm not even like, I'm not just a bad kid, like talking and like not <laughs> listening. Like I'm in trouble because I'm right. I'm, I don't hear you. Like I don't, right. I, I can like not lose eye contact the whole time. Like sit here and I'm like focused but it's not going in but no i'm not retaining it unless the like if it has to be the last thing that they do like we can't talk about shit <laughs> if, if if it's the last thing i see i can go do it or i could go do it but if they're like all right and then they explain some philosophy about it or, or do some movement or whatever like then i lose what we're doing like my my mind would just go right to something else like i had a very hard time concentrating and you know, it's it's crazy because when I got to this facility, you know, I didn't know, I didn't necessarily know what I was walking into, but they have you do this questionnaire. And like on this questionnaire is like all of these things. I'm like, that's part of something. Like me not being able to focus, that's part of something. My sleep, that's part of something. This startle effect is part of something. Like me having these like completely like specific things that are all on this was like, damn, okay. Like I didn't even want to see the EEG because I was, I was scared. You know, I was like, yeah. what if you can't fix me? And now I know all the shit that's wrong with me. Like that's, right. that sucks. But then, you know, they show you different EEGs and they show you the, they take it every single week. And so you actually get to see it and you get to see the level that you were functioning at, at especially the different parts of your brain. But then, and the thing is, that's awesome about this is you get to keep the results. Like, unless you go do exactly what you did and go fuck it up again, like you get to keep it. It's not like this maintenance package, which is, you know, a problem for these pharmaceutical companies. There's, there's, there's not a whole lot of retention on it because once people get their brains functioning, as long as you're not sitting there hitting your head against the wall, like you get to keep feeling better. Like these, these veterans get to go back to, to combat or, or whatever it is their job is like we fighters get to go back football players get to go back like I, I sat in with the chargers uh medical staff and talked about our stuff there as well I, I i don't even remember who else there was people from all over the the country coming in asking about this you know and, and needing yeah. to sit in and, and and they're looking at these eegs in particular so what is it doing like how is it fixing you so one um I think it, you know, there's something with what goes on in your brain with, with the thyroid stuff, with the endocrine stuff is like getting your damage to your hypothalamus. Right. And that's like, uh, that, that kind of directs all of the information that goes to your thyroid, your thyroid, you know, then sends out everything to your body. And there, when there's like a disconnect there, um, you know, it's just, it screws everything up. And, and then on top of it, like now that we're cutting the same weight we've always had to cut, but we don't get IVs and we, I mean, you, you cannot 100% rehydrate your brain within 45 or 48 hours. Like you can get your body decently hydrated, I believe, but your brain is just, it's its own thing, you know? And so now we don't have IVs, our, our hydraulic system in our brain is down and now we're rattling it even more like dehydrated. I mean, we're just going to have, you know, bigger side effects to, to our brains being dehydrated with that. Now, um, the damage that comes to the hypothalamus, to the pituitary, to the um, your thyroid, all of that that goes on there, like that there, they're saying that you can you can get it firing back at a level that it was before it got hurt. Like as long as the cells are still alive in it, they can re-energize those cells. Now, if you have like just a dead part of your brain, you know, they're not bringing it back to life, but they can 
um, use these magnets to kind of fluff them back up, give them back their energy, their their life, and and put in uh, put them in, back into a functional way that was something similar to you at your healthiest, and and make it. I mean, not more or less durable, just back. Right now, yeah. when you when you were saying <clears throat> motor skills, like what was wrong? Because that's one of the things that they see in fighters that have taken too many shots. They start having, they analyze fighters' gates, mm -hmm. and one of the things that happens is your legs get closer together, mm -hmm. um, your, your balance is off, your, your steps are shorter, you don't have that sort of like dynamic mm -hmm. fluid motion to your body, and you're having a, hard, a harder time with balance and just motor skills. Yeah, totally. So uh, how I felt before going into there was all I had was a gas pedal. I was like, just will, you know, and just fuck them you know just because i i wasn't reading patterns of people anymore like if someone leans this way a little bit i'm like oh okay i know what you're thinking like if they right. step this way or that way and and even me juking them and like trying to like faint at them like i i wasn't i couldn't even see the reaction i was making them make like i knew what motions in my muscular memory to make them do but it like i wasn't getting the feedback because it, it just like wasn't so that was one of the first things i noticed was you know going back into practice and and watching people's angles and beating them to it and and, re and like remembering i'm like damn i don't just have to shoot to shoot like i can wait and do it when it's the right time or i can even like like take advantage of of the fact that you know I'm making them step back or I can flash fire in their face and and jump on them at their knee jerk reaction you know like mm -hmm. these things of like being able to manipulate the situation and make them adjust to me like I could see that again and I could see So um, what were you seeing before like when, when I just you, had go all I had was go like it, when you, you didn't see movement like say if someone was going to spin and they like loaded up their hips you didn't see that No it just hit, hit them first what were, what were you seeing I all I I didn't all I saw was get there first. All I saw was like close the distance, don't get hit in the head. Like make like get down, get low and just be a linebacker, you know? Wow. And and hit him because I I knew I wasn't seeing that stuff. And the more I tried to see it, the more I would just sit there and wear it cuz I'm like any minute now, any minute now I'm going to I'm going to catch the pattern. I'm going to catch mm -hmm. the pattern. But it and, wasn't there. And for it wasn't you. popping up. So then all I so had was if, just even tack. if you were just like super light sparring, just moving around, you didn't see it? No. And no, not really, no. Wow. Yeah. That's fucking terrifying. I was like, yeah, it was really scary. And like even I'd even get to like a good position in jujitsu and I'd be like, I know I know stuff here. I know I know stuff here. But you didn't know what to do. What was it? What was it? What was it? I know I know stuff. You know, but like it wasn't like especially with adrenaline firing, like it wasn't just happening for me and so like three four weeks into that all of a sudden like that fog was starting to go down a bit right and like part of it was and then and then i'm also sleeping better were you, you know? skeptical before like during like the first week were oh you, yeah because like, every anything? every fucking person i went to could fix me right and you're driving 45 minutes like what the fuck am i yeah. doing it, yeah. <laughs> yeah in a in a in a car i leased <laughs> so all those miles right, you know right, it's like right. damn and um it's a uh, it's super frustrating yes everyone can fix me everyone yeah. can fix me and then they don't and then my heart's broken again and then i go to the next one and then my heart's broken again and then and then the next one so this one i'm like I'm like, I'm not even going to tell people about this because I'm sick of f fucking hitting up people and being excited about it and telling them to come with me and then it doesn't work and then I'm that guy again. Right. You know, and so going into this and then watching it work and then seeing all the other people it was working for in there that, and they were never trying to push me to promote it. They were like, just come in, just get here, you know? And, mm -hmm. and if you like it, then tell the, cause the UFC was talking about getting one of the machines at the PI mm -hmm. and they're kind of going to have me be like, uh, a guinea pig for it. Ian McCall went in there too, but it didn't like he he was doing his own kind of other stuff that was making it so it wasn't working for him. But like I I was all in. He was you know? doing something that was making it so it wasn't working. I for don't him? think he was coming in often. Oh. So I think and and the thing is is that it does stir shit up, right? So like they 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 mess with your the the levels because again they have to like if the back of your brain's running at four hertz and and okay eight is technically where like you're sleeping you're at rest like you're there's part of your brains that could be under your resting 
hertz, right? While the front of your brain is running at 12. So that's like high anxiety, but like low energy. And, and, and they can, mm. they can almost tell you how you've been feeling lately, which was like wow. nuts to me. Right. And you, you could, they can tell, you know, because of this and this, that, that you have some OCD tendencies versus this person constantly feels like they have no energy and their memory isn't working and they're emotionally incapable of like being in, you know, being a, positive force in a relationship right now because they don't have it so they could read your brain like that damn i need to get my fucking you brain should. checked out you should you should <laughs> it's scary though because like you, you when you see that like little like <sighs> in there you're like what's that but it's for me it's that's a two-hour drive shit yeah i know that they're i don't know if they have anything up here i know that they've, they they, they have a bunch all over here but, it is. This is what it's called. I couldn't. The website's not coming up, but this is personalized repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, a non-invasive therapeutic approach to the treatment of PTSD and other neuro, neurocognitive disorders. Uh, Kevin T. Murphy, M.D., Vice Chair, Department of Radiation and Medicine, Applied Sciences, UC San Diego, Director, Pediatric Radiation Oncology Program, uh, Rady Children's Hospital, San Diego. Wow. Yeah. So that's where you're going, and. Um, I mean, obviously, during this whole thing, you have to be questioning what you do for a living. Oh, yeah. Well, and it's like, okay, so they can fix this. Say they fix it, and then I go do it again. Well, you if you're going to fight Cyborg, right? I mean, you were, you were thinking about fixing it, and you, you were going from one girl who hits like a dude to another girl who might hit like a bigger dude. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah. Cyborg's fucking and terrifying. It's, and it's like, I know healthy, at my healthiest, mm -hmm. Like, no, no problem. I believe that. Like, I believe in myself like that. Like, right. I can figure them out, especially and find a way to not get hit doing it. Like, I didn't get hit in my MMA career significant a hit. Not one significant, significant hit until Amanda. And then after that, I was getting fucking lit up. Right? And and not even that. Even Juliana. Like, she kind of open hand bitch slapped me a little bit from the sides. But, I and but like, I can find a way to to like still control it enough to be like like very effective without taking too much damage but right. like that that slow of my my motor skills my mechanics it was it was really bothering me and that's not how you go fight someone like cyborg you don't go no. in there with that weight in your pocket you know it's so important that you're talking about this because this is a this is such a factor that we don't see on the outside, other people, you know, other people than the people that are really close to you that you talk to about these things. Mm -hmm. Like if we were seeing you fight and, you know, when we see the decline of certain fighters, you know, you, you see certain fighters, they, they're in a couple really hard fights and then you see a decline, like a real obvious decline in their skills and mm -hmm. their abilities. Very, very rarely are they opening up about what's going on.